Okay, hello everybody. This recording is meant as a revision for the persuasive essay as part of our essential skills for the writing and language. Of course, we have already discussed the different types of appeals. We started with the logic of appeal and we have uh, said that the emotion, uh, the logical appeal is not enough on its own uh, in its uh, uh, subtypes, uh, the deductive and inductive reasoning. And we said we need to support it with emotional as well as ethical appeal as they both address sympathy as well as credibility in our discussion. The pre-writing section is divided into different parts. Of course, before you get started, you need to address the purpose of the persuasion. You need to be logical, compelling, and as well as uh, having a strong argument. Choosing the topic, it has to be substantive. You have to have strong feelings towards the idea and it, the topic itself has to be relatable so people would, uh, let's say, enjoy or at least be interested in the topic. Your thesis has to be simple, suggestive, as well as debatable and reasonable. Now, the different types. Now, I'm going to start with the audience, of course. The audience is very important to address. And I'm going to start with the pinpointing of the, range, the different range of positions for the audience. You have to understand where your audience stands at. And then according to that, you need to study this audience perspective ethically, emotionally, and logically. And after you study that, you need to address these categories uh, efficiently. Now, remember, if there are any good points, yeah, if there are any good points, let me just erase this. Okay, so if there, if there are any good points, please do address them, okay, and be efficient in responding to these. Developing an argument, of course, the development has to be through the claims that you have as well as the counterclaims. Now, remember to support your points, your opinions with uh, facts and references. Uh, creating some sort of st substantial evidence for whatever you are trying to address. Okay, address any opposition that you face as well as draw conclusions. After the address of these, you have to mention what do you conclude of your, uh, let's say, uh, 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 answers or, or uh, responses towards these ideas. Of course, you need to be polite, objective, and formal. Now, which brings me to the next idea, which is organizing an argument. Remember that your organization has to be logical. If it's logical, that means you have two ways to address the, prob uh, the, uh, uh, the text. Number one, you can address it uh, as a problem solution uh, uh, pattern, or you can use the compare and contrast pattern, depending on the topic that you have. Now, of course, uh, transitions can differ, yet there is a list over here for you that you can see and which is also present on your uh, uh, on your book. Now, the next idea that I need to, to discuss is in fact uh, the checklist. This ch checklist is in fact found on your book page 309. Okay, why do we need this checklist? Of course, this checklist is for us to study our, uh, let's say, our essay, which we have already started in the classroom. And it was, I think, on page, uh, if I'm not wrong, it's like page 200. I'm sorry, I can't write here. So it's like, pay, oh, it was on page 278. I'm not quite sure about the pages, but I think this is where it is. So guys, if you, uh, if you remember this task in which we were supposed to write an essay about uh, some sort of technology that has changed uh, our society. Now, of course, in this checklist, I, need, uh, I will be assessing my own theses uh, as well as 
the elements of the introduction as well as the different body paragraphs. Of course, the first uh, part is that my thesis statement, whether it is clear and based on logical reasons. Uh, of course, the idea of the thesis statement has been discussed in the classroom as well as in the SAT essay uh, uh, in which we responded to uh, like writers' essays, persuasive essays. Uh, again, you need also to assess the idea of how your introduction establishes some significance of the claim as well as it captures the attention. Remember, capturing the attention depends mainly on using a proper hook. Okay, so if you have a proper hook, you can attract people to your audience as well as the, uh, how relevant the topic is. Okay, now uh, checking your body paragraphs. How do I check the body paragraphs? Number one, I need to pay attention to whether they are unified and coherent. Unity is addressed uh, through having a link Okay, between each paragraph and each body paragraph and the thesis statement, how does that body paragraph uh, substantiate some sort of uh, evidence for your uh, thesis statement? And coherence is also addressed through the words, the transitions that we have already mentioned before. So uh, next I have, uh, uh, we need also to show some consistency in using uh, organized structure, and uh, the way that we sequence your claims, your counterclaims, your reasons, and your evidence. Is there some sort of a, 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 of a sequence or a, a certain organization? We have already mentioned that as well. Uh, do we, uh, are we supporting our main point effectively? We need to evaluate. How do we see that? Of course, through evaluation of our evidence. Okay, whether my evidence and its source are valid or not, are credible or not, all this uh, has a great effect on my uh, essay. I also need to see, have I answered the uh, different range of perspectives that there are? I, I don't need to be narrow, I need to be broad in addressing all these uh, uh, different concerns that people might have. I have to be honest and whether have I anticipated any, any let's say, refutation I might uh, be facing, and whether if there were any good points, have I conceded these points, because this gives me some sort of uh, credibility in my address, and most importantly, whether I've avoided the different logical fallacies. Of course, uh, uh, there is also the conclusion. In the conclusion, have I, uh, let's say, have I concluded the ideas in supporting my, uh, in support of my, I'm sorry for this, in support of my main point or my argument, as well as have I called for action? Remember that, guys, you are, you are over here arguing for a certain issue, for a certain idea. So you need to change people's perspective. By changing people's perspective, you are calling for action, of course, for specifically if you're talking about um, um, what I call a problem solution. You need now, uh, at the end, you need to study your uh, word usage, whether you have uh, been formal or not. Have you had uh, a proper style, uh, an accessible style? Have you been, uh, uh, let's say, have you been neutral? Uh, have you uh, have you been like uh, extremely like incomplete, let, let's say, uh, uh, I don't want to say the word uh, conflict, but rather have you opposed your audience in key uh, issues? Also, you need to uh, address the, dis the different syntax uh, of the usage, remember that uh, you need to have a variety of uh, sentence structure to minimize uh, your, uh, let's say, monotony in, in presenting the idea. So you have to use a variety of uh, sentence structure that vary from uh, simple to compound complex. You need also to maintain cohesion. Uh, have you used enough 
transition words, trans transition sentences, as well as have you addressed the different appeals? Okay, have you been sincere in your presentation? This is very important. And last but not least, your spelling. At the end, I want to thank you for uh, your time and I wish that this has been, uh, let's say, fruitful for you. And if you have any questions, please do address your teachers. I wish you the best of luck and we'll see you soon.